Welcome back to Coding and a Cup of Java, lecture number 4, Arrays. So before the break we spoke about multidimensional arrays, so ar arrays with two dimensions or even arrays with three dimensions. And uh, we saw a simple example of how we could use it, but not really why we could would use it or what we would use it for. So now I'm actually going to code the biggest examples to uh, example to date. I'm going to start coding a. Um, we need to import the scanner as well. We I'm going to uh, start coding a tic tac toe game. Um, it's not going to be complete. Uh, the further uh, explorations in the uh, in the uh, questions and exercises document is actually about finishing what I'm coding now. So I'll give you the code and then you can finish it by adding a few other things. But I will show you the concept and how you can do it. A very good example of how you can use arrays, how those goes together with loops, different types of loops, and uh, just a lot of things there. So so let's get. Cracking tic tac toe. There we go. And then we do public static void main, and then the string array, like so. There you go. And uh, first of all, we might want to just grab the scanner, you know, so we can get some user input because we want to know where the user want to play a specific piece. Um, so right. So now we want to have a board. A board. Uh, what, what am I doing? <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm talking too much. Uh, we want to have a board wh wh that the uh, that well that we can see in the where we can place our pieces and uh, wh where we can check if anyone has one or not. We can check if it's uh, it's a, a draw. You know if the board is full and all of those things. So I'm going to do that with uh, with a character. Uh, two-dimensional array. So the two-dimensional array gives us, well, a 2D board. Um, and then I use characters so I can have X's, circles, or or spaces, but depending on what's there. So space, uh, it's just free. And X is the, the player with the X's, has placed an X there, obviously. And the players with the circles can place it, uh, place a circle there as well, and we're using O's for those. Um, so then we do board equals new char. And we want a 3x3 three three board to play with, uh, right? So then we just create that, but we might want to actually... Um, we might actually want to clear it first, because at the moment it's just going to be empty. We want to give it spaces there, so uh, it's going to print out spaces. So we do board. So, so at the moment I'm just going to loop through. We've we've done this before. The last example before the break, I looped through the different dimensions of a multi-dimensional array. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. And then we refer to that length instead, the inner length there. And then we just do uh, increase j like that. And then finally we just get the one at the specific index and set it to space. So what we're doing here is we loop through the outer array. For each of the inner arrays we loop through them and set their content to a space. Basically we clear the board. So that's what we do there. So we create a board to play on and then we clear it. Right, so that's before we even start to play. Then we can start with some variables here. We go player, so we want, want to know which player we have at the moment. And we want to start with an X, for instance. And then we can check if the uh, if we have any winner. We don't want to play if someone has won. But at the start, we don't have a winner. So we need two things. We need the player and to know if anyone has won. So we could like loop uh, while we um, we don't have a winner. So as soon as we get a winner, we stop the loop because then we stop the play. But I'm actually going to use a for loop like this, because we need to check somehow if uh, if the game uh, is a draw, uh, well has uh, ended by a victory or by a draw, and it's very easy to check if, if, if it's a draw, it's just that if we have played for 9 turns then the board is full, if we haven't won by then then well it must be a draw because there are pieces all over the place. Um, so that's why I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to loop through the different turns, and when we reach nine, then we're out of here. But also, if we have a winner, uh, we also want to exit out. So I'm just going to do 
and has winner, not has winner. So if we have a winner, uh, then we're not going to loop. If we have uh, looped uh, nine times already, we're not going to continue. So so that's the condition for the loop. So as you can see, I'm using a for loop, but I add, I'm adding another condition here, uh, semicolon there. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so like I said before, this is just a condition part, and usually just do like if the the uh, variable we are looping through is less than something, is greater than something, or whatnot. But uh, we're with this the semicolon. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, but we're checking two things here, so that it's not a winner and a turn there. And then what we can do here is to print out the current player because each time it's going to be the 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 uh, other player so we might want to print out which is the current one uh, so we print out the current player is and then we add the player like so right and then we after we have printed out who's who whose turn it is we might want to print the ball as well so we know what to place things in um, and then we can do four. And he, here we go. Now I'm going to use uh, four each loops to go through this board. As you can see here, row board. So first of all, I'm looping through the different rows. Each row is a char array because, well, the board is a two-dimensional char array. So that means that each element in the board, which we call row, is of the type char array. But then we want to go through all the different characters inside the array so then we do like that so we go through all the different elements in a row like that so I have a nested for each loop now instead because I have a multiple uh, multi-dimensional array and then we do system dot out dot print like that so we print out that character and then we do I just print a new line like that. Oh, you can do. Let's do like that. I like I like that way. I think I think it's good. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so now we're printing out the board. We're doing nothing else apart from that. Um, but uh, that's a start. So when we have printed out the board, the, we might want to tell the user, well, where do you want to place uh, your piece? You know, uh, you want to play, right? So, just a simple message. Please enter the position to place the piece at. So, how do you enter that? Uh, stupid shift, there you go. Uh, and I'm going to use the numpad. So, we, we're going to use the numbers as they are located on the uh, on the numpad of, of, of your keyboard to the very right, unless you're at a laptop that doesn't have one. Uh, so 1 to 9 like on the numpad. So we tell the user that that's how it's going to work. Um, and then I... There you go. Like that. So then we want to read it. And what we want in the end is a x value. So we know where in the board we are. Uh, we also want a y value, and that's also where we are. So we, we need to know where the player wants to put the piece, and then we want to put that piece at that location. Uh, so we need to calculate that from the number the player enters. And to do so, I'm going to use an untable loop. They do while loop. So like I said, I'm, this is an example of many things together, uh, and we're using the, the uh, multidimensional board array to sort of uh, create this tic tac toe game. So first of all, we want a number from from the user uh, because we ask for a number. We ask for one to nine, and therefore we want an integer here, like so. But you know, when when we count things, um, when we work with indices in uh, in programming or at least in Java, we start at zero. But the numpad numbers that are aligned like the board, you know, the 3 by 3, those are numbered from 1 to 9, so therefore I want to subtract with 1, so we go from 0 to 9 instead. And that's going to allow us to easily calculate the x and y values from that number. Right? Uh, and now we can use something that is very neat when it comes to uh, mod and integer division. We can get the 
coordinate like this. So the x value we're using mod for because we're, we're increasing. Um, if you think about it, we, if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if we want the x value on the numpad, then we then we go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So therefore we divide by three and check how many we have left. And that's why we want to subtract it by one, so we don't get uh, weird numbers. We instead get zero, one, two as it's supposed to be. While the y here is going to be the uh, the the y value so so think about it if we, we have on numpad we go one two three four five six seven eight nine then the if we divide it by three integer division we're going to get zero 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 one 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 two 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 okay but we need one more thing because the, our board here it's going to loop through in in like the normal order so it starts at the at the top and then it prints new line uh, and then print out the next line new line so it starts at with zero at the top but well, the numpad is in the opposite well direction, so um, we can do it like that. So that's going to invert it. So if we have one, we get two minus one equals one. If we have number divided by three being two, then we get two minus two equals uh, zero. So so everything is just inverted there, so we get it properly. So now we have a number here that's converted to x and y, va y values for the user, but we want to add the the end of the while here, right? And first of all, we need to check that the user actually entered a value that is valid, like inside the board. So if the user entered a value that is outside the board, like the x is lower than zero, that y is lower than zero, or that x is greater than 2, or y is greater than 2, for instance. If any of those are the case, then we still need to loop. We need to ask the user for another integer, because the, the old one wasn't valid, it was outside, it pulled itself. Right? Uh, but if all of that is true, uh, well, if all of that is false, sorry, uh, we still want to continue looping if the player do, do one th specific thing. If the player tries to place the uh, um the new piece where it's well where there's already another piece so if the user uh, the coordinate we the coordinates we got if those are already occupied then we want to continue so uh we continue looping here while we have a x value that is too low if we have a y value that is too low, or if we have a x value that is too high, a y value that is too high, or that we have a proper value but it's already occupied. Right? Okay. Um, and if, if we if we finally get a number that is is all right, then we're going to continue here and then we can use that value. Observe that if there's no valid numbers at all, like the board is full, then we will never be able to exit out this loop. But luckily, we're making sure that you can't play for more than nine turns. That's awesome, right? Uh, so that's good to, to, to have, because if we don't have a way to check if we have a draw, then we will never actually... Oops, what happened there? Uh, we will never actually be able to break out of this loop while, uh, once the, the board is actually full. Okay, so now it's pretty straightforward. We can just do board y x. There you go. Equals player. We just, because if we have the what? If we have the um, location we want to place the piece at already, and we know uh, which player we are, then we can just place that at the board. As you can see here, I'm referring to y as the first index and x to the second. Why do I do that? Well, basically because when we print it out, we loop through uh, x here as the inner ones, just because x, the x coordinates, when we change that, were still in the same uh, row, and then we want to print out a new line afterwards. So that's why y comes first in this case, and it depends on how you build up your array, you can do it uh, in both ways. But it's much easier now, because then we can just print out the, the row, and then a new line, print out a new row, and so on and so forth. Printing out a column wouldn't really work properly. So that's why we use Y first, and then X. Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to finish this properly, so to start with, I'm not actually going to check if anyone has won. But I'm going to do that before, before we end this, but it's not going to be com completely complete. If 
So I'm using a ternary operator that we went through the uh, during the if statements uh, lecture, lecture number two. So what uh, we're doing here is that if the player is um, x, so if we're using the x to play with, or well if we have done that already, then we want to use the uh, circles as the new ones. But if that's not the case, if, we're not ha if we haven't used the x's already, then let's use the x's now. So we basically swap back and forth between x's and o. Uh, X's and circles, and now we now we, this should be actually operational. Like that, no no compilation errors. Awesome, and then we run that like that. So it says current player is X, and then we get nothing there. So we just hope that that's the empty board. Please enter the position to place the piece at one to nine, like on the nine pad. So I'm going to hit five and then hit enter, and all of a sudden I have an X there in the middle, and then it says current player is the circle. Um, please enter blah 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 blah, and then I can do seven. And I can do uh, a lot, you know. So I'm just playing against myself. Uh, you can invite your buddy. Uh, but as you can see, it's not going to exit out of this because there's no win condition. Uh, this. So I'm just going to fill the board. And when I fill the board, it's just going to break out. And as you can see, it's not going to print out at a final time. I'm going to add uh, some win conditions, but I'm not going to fix that with the board. Uh, so it's just not printing it out when you win or when it's a draw. Right. So let's see in here now. He let's add a win condition. But like I said, I'm not going to finish this uh, tic tac toe completely because well, I'm just going to show examples of what you can do. So I'm not going to finish it all the way. So I'm not going to check for all the different victories you can have. I'm just going to check the horizontal uh, victories. But like I said, one of the further explorations that you can do, further exploration one, has the task to actually finish up this game. So you should add. So the board is printed out. Uh, you should add so you um, so you can win in all the different uh, uh, possibilities like vertical lines as well um, and a few other things. So I'm just going to show you an example of how we can check for horizontal lines. So first of all, we're going to loop through it like um, like this. So we loop through. Let's go like. Um, so we loop through the different rows because if we want to check a horizontal uh, line, well, a row, then we need to uh, get all the rows to check them, right? And uh, then what we do uh, is we check if the first character on that row is uh, equals to the second one, equals to the second one. Because you know, if you win, you need to have the full row, right? And then we check that the second uh, one is the same as the third one, right? So we're not checking if the third one is equal to the first one. There's no reason to do so because if we know that the first one is the same as the second one and the second one equals the third one, then then we know that they're all the same. But this is actually not going to work, right? Why? Well, at the start. All of them are going to be the same, and you, you, it will say you won because why not? Uh, yes, because the board is empty. So we also need to make sure that uh, it's not empty. So we just check if one, if they are all the same, but one of them are, are one of them is not empty. Then, well, we know that none of them are empty. So we can just do it like that. And if that's the case, we want to break out this loop because, well, we don't need to check for any other winning conditions. And then we can just set has winner equals true. Like that. Pretty straightforward. So this is uh, Hori uh, Sontol victory. But like I said, we're not checking for the columns. We're not checking for diagonals either. We're just like checking if you won using. Uh, using the horizontal win condition by placing three axes next to each other in a horizontal line or three circles. Okay, but if we have won, we don't want to change the player because we want to like store which player won, so we can print that out. So I'm just going to do if not has winner here. So if we don't have a winner, then change it so the next player can play. And then finally, in the end, we might want to print out uh, things depending on like if we, anyone won. So has winner. If that's the case, then we can just do system dot out dot print ln, and then we do uh, player one because we know 
that player stores the one that last uh, played, and if someone won, then the one who last played, well, won, and that's why I don't want to swap the player uh, otherwise. So we can now uh, like uh, swap the player, something like that. And then we do else here, and just do. Uh, we print out that it was a draw. Okay, so so just because I'm using using it like this, I'm using the board as a char char two-dimensional array. It's very easy to loop through to clear it. It's very easy to loop through to print it out. It's very easy to just loop through the different rows and check if we won. Um, so it's it makes perfectly sense to have a two-dimensional array because then we can store it as a board three by three, and um, since we're storing it as a char array, uh, we can easily just print it out. We just print the characters out like that. And also, since we're storing the player as a char, we can very easily just assign that to to the board. Um, and we can also easily print it out. The only uh, downside with having the player as a uh, a char instead of like a boolean value, like it like a, a variable called is it player one's turn or something like that. The only uh, the downside is that we have to do this to swap them. Otherwise we could do like uh, player one's turn equals not player one's turn. So just swap it back and forth. But it, just because we do it like this, we can easily just print it out there and print it out there. So now if I hit compile, compilation complete, nice. And then I can play here. Um, obviously I don't have a friend here right now, so I'll play it myself. So X there we go like that. Here's a quick way through there. So like I said before, it's not going to print out a board after you won or after it's over. But as you can see, it found out that the X is one here because I uh, used nine there, so that's the uh, position up there. So that would fi fill a full row. Uh, and you can't win uh, vertically either, like I said. But this is an example of how you can combine multi-dimensional arrays with with four four loops with four each loops uh, where we're using do while loops and we, we basically has put everything together here to give you a big example on how you can use these guys but like I said the game is not completed and if you want to then that's your job so after the lecture is over, then go to the questions and exercises document and go to further explorations one, and that uh, is explained there. Like you get a code from there, and you can also uh, get the, the task you are supposed to finish. So that's that about this example. Now I'm going to continue with with something else, and I've already said that I was going to do that. So if you remember what's left in this lecture, then you'll know what it is. So we go with public. Static, public static, no, public class, arguments, example. So now I'm going to use something called command line arguments. And I have hinted about those uh, earlier in the lecture, and we were also seeing them throughout all the lectures, even though we haven't known what, what, what they are, what, why they are there. So when we, when we run a program, we the code inside our public static void main is going to be run, right? Uh, we, we've done so so all the time. But we can also, when we run a program, we can give it something called the command line arguments, and those are going to show up here. When we run a program, any program on your computer, they might have like extra commands to them, like you want to run something in in uh, in minimized mode, you want to run it in debug mode. I don't know, like extra commands to it that you can add after after the the run command itself. And that's basically what these are. I'm first going to show you way to use them, and then I'm going to show you a little bit bigger example. So I can just do args dot length. So so args here, uh, we get that uh, when. Uh, when the program is started. So it's like a normal uh, string array called args. Why it's just here, why it's in a, right next to the main here, is going to be uh, well spoken about in the next lecture, the one about functions. So um, until then you can just think about it, well, there's, there's an array here, a string array that we for some reason get when the program starts, and at the moment I'm checking how long it is. 
here you go and then if I hit run here it's going to say zero and remember when I hit run up here on the button then it then it's going to uh, automatically type run arguments example just because the the program is called arguments example and therefore it's going to print, print out zero because we don't have any any uh, arguments. How do we add an argument? Well, we can basically just do it like so. We add that after the, the actual run command. Like so, one. If we add another one, we have two. So now we have the two different uh, arguments, one called hello and one called world. So those are sent along while we're running, the, well, when we start the program. And if we want to, we can use them. So before I get to the bigger sample, I'm just going to show you that we, well, we can just loop through them like we've done before. So it's just a for each loop like this, and then we can print them out. System.add.println arg, like so. Compile it. Hit run. If I do so, it's not going to print out anything at all, because when you hit run, it's going to just run it without any arguments at all. Arrow up to get it again, and then I can type hello world. It's going to give me hello and world because it's going to loop through them and print them out on different lines. If I add another command line argument called derp, it's going to say, say hello world derp, like so. So that was just an introduction of how you call them, like how you use them here, and also how you get them from here. So it's just a normal string array. So now let's make an example. Uh, that is going to allow you to go into debug mode by by adding debug as the command line argument there. So right. So first of all, we want a boolean here to know if we're debugging. Is the debugging equals false? So by default, we're not debugging at all. But however, if one of the arguments, any of them, uh, equals debug then we want to go into debug mode. So therefore we set is debugging equals true, right? So we're going to use that later on in the program. And the, the main program is going to be very si simple. We've seen a similar one before. It's basically just going to sum up these different numbers. Like this. And then we have some like that. And we're going to loop through the array. And uh, yeah, so this is the same as the first example that we had in this lecture about arrays. Uh, but as you can see, we are using something called uh, the command line arguments and to see if we're in debug mode. Length i++ plus plus, like that. And then we do sum plus equals to numbers. Right. And then we do system.art.println like that. And then sum. Oh, well, we can actually print out the sum is like that. So if we run it now, we're not going to use the top one there at all. Um, uh, I call it numbers there. It should be called uh, numbers. Um, and then we can hit run. So now it's just going to print out the, the sum is 39 because we add them together. But we might want to go into debug mode to see, well, Shouldn't the result be 40? Why is it 39? Um, shouldn't it be like 37 or something like that? I, I, if we have any question about what's going on, we might want to get some more information, but normally when we run it, we uh, probably don't want that. So as you can realize, um, it's pretty silly. We, we just add numbers together. It's not tricky to to see why, why something is uh, added like it is. But, you know, it's a simple example, so you get the idea. Uh, debugging. So if we have that as true, which is true if we've used debug here as an argument, um, then we're going to print out, um, if I can get that right, come on, there you go, adding, and then we do number, so we get a number at a spe specific location, and we add that to the sum like that. So now, if I compile it, oops, compile it, and hit run, it's going to say the sum is 39. If I run it again, it's going to say the sum is 39. But why? So I can then type debug here afterwards, and all of a sudden it's going to say, 
adding 23 to 0, adding 13 to 23, adding 2 to 36, and finally adding 1 to 38. All right, that's why it gets, it's 39 and not 38. I forgot the 1, for instance. Um, but if, if I run it normally, say if I run it without the debug command, it's obviously not going to type that. So in this sense, you can add extra information afterwards. So when you run, run the program, you can give it some more information. Um, and one of the examples, um, well not examples, but one of the uh, exercises in the exercises and questions document is about writing a program where you can sort of log in with your username and password. And then you're supposed to use the command line arguments. So if the user wants to, uh, that user can have a predefined username. So for instance, like yeah, I don't want to type in my name all the time. So when I run the program, I can like run uh, exercise. It's exercise two. Exercise two. I can just do like that, and then I don't just have to. It's it's actually supposed to be like that. Um, I'm supposed to just uh, add the password instead. But that's the exercise. Exercise uh, two. So you just take a look on that after the lecture. So that's pretty much it, I believe. Uh, for for this lecture. So let's see what we've done uh, today. So we started with arrays, right? So to create an array, you first need to have the type. So we have int, in this case, we want an integer array, and then we have the uh, square brackets. The square brackets defines that we want an array, and in this case, an array of uh, just one dimension. Then we add a name, like any other variable, in this case, my integer array equals to, and then we create the actual array. To create an array with a specific length, then you just do new int, and then square brackets 5, for instance, and this is going to give us a new integer array of length 5. We wouldn't be able to create a new string array here because we're trying to store it in our variable, which is an integer array. To assign a value to it at a specific index, we just do the name of the, uh, the variable, the array, have some square brackets with a number in it, that number is the index. Remember the index starts at 0, so this is the third number in this example, because we have 0, 1, 2, so 2 is the third, and we store a 5 there. Uh, so it's just like assigning values to a normal variable, but we need to refer to the index as well. When we read the value from an array, we do it like we do when we uh, read a value from a variable, the only difference is that we need to refer to an index, just like when we're assigning it a value. When we're creating a new array with some pr uh, already given values, if we ha know what values we want to have, we can do it like the following. So we define the variable in the same way. We do int square brackets and my integer array, and then equals to, but instead of defining the length by doing new int square brackets and then length, we just do curly brackets and then just add all the values. So we have curly brackets 3, 2, 15, and 8, and then another uh, while well, closing curly brackets, and that's going to give us a integer array of length four uh, with those values. So at index zero, we have a three. At index uh, one, we have a two. At index two, we have 15. And at index three, we have eight. Then we had the different types of loops that we went through the last lecture, but we can apply them easily with with arrays. So if we want to use a for loop, we just do so with for int i, for instance, and start at zero. So that's the first element. So the index always starts at zero. And then we loop while i is less than the length of the array. That's going to start at the lowest index and end at the highest index. And now we can just refer to the value by doing, for instance, my integer array and then square brackets i. And in this case, we're reading the value, but we can use it for for writing uh, the value while assigning the value to the array. And we can also use the for each loop where we do the type and then the name and then colon and the array. So in this case, we do int because we have an integer array. And then we call it e for element and then the colon and then my integer array since that's our array. And therefore, each time it loops, it's going to give get us uh, the different values. So first time, we're going to print out a 3. Then we're going to print out a 2, then 15, and finally 8, just because that's what the array contains. We can also have multi-dimensional arrays. So uh, first of all, we have a very simple one. We have a two-dimensional integer array called test. And we create a, the first dimension to be 10 elements long. And for each of those uh, elements, we have 20 uh, element. So we have 10 in the first dimension and 20 in the second. When we create a array with 
predefined values. We saw how we did with the curvy brackets, and it's not a difference with the multi uh, multi-dimensional one. We just put the arrays inside each other as an array. So we have two and three there as one array. We have the one as one array and the double zeros as a third array. And th those are all the parts of the big array, the outer array, where we also have curvy brackets. You just add more and more to it. Then we can have a three-dimensional one. It just it's just as easy as a two-dimensional one, so that test three there is a three-dimensional one, so we do int and then three curvy brackets like so, and then we do um, test equals new int, and they just give us the dimension of those, those dimensions, so in this case we have two, three, and five. Test four is an example of how we can define just the first, or the first couple of first um, first ones. The only uh, restriction you have is that the very first not one needs to have a pre-defined uh, uh, length, or well, you need to define its length. Well, the other ones you can leave empty if you want to, but you will have to make sure then that you actually give them any content. If you try to access the values afterwards, it, without doing that, you're going to get errors and crash. Finally, we have this six-dimensional array example. And the only reason why it's there is to show that there's not a reason, uh, well, there's no difference at all. So we have a six dimensional one here now, and well, it's just like any other multi dimensional one. So we just make arrays out of arrays, and if we want to continue, we can do, do, just do arrays out of arrays out of arrays out of arrays, and just go like that forever. Um, so if you need super big arrays, like uh, multiple dimensional arrays to a very high dimensional count, then you can do so. But, um, well, it might be a bit confusing, but you can totally do so. Right, and then we had the command line arguments that we just went through before this um, summary. And to do so, we just do what we've always done, public class and then the name of the of the program, and then we b do public static void main and then string square bracket and args, and that args thing there, th that, that variable there that is there for a reason, is going to give us the command line arguments that we can add afterwards uh, after a pro uh, after the run command when we run the program, and then in this case here we're just going to print them out on different lines. But as you saw in the last example, I used them for for allowing you to go into debug mode. So you type run arguments example, and then you add a debug afterwards, and uh, that that will allow us to like print out adding 23 to zero and so on. Um, right, and finally the normal style here that we usually have. The question and exercises. So remember at the um, uh, lecture p uh, page we have the questions and exercises document. It's automatically being uploaded uh, when the lecture ends and it contains a few questions and the questions are there for for uh, you to see if you've learned what, what we've discussed during the lecture and there will also be answers to them in the end of the document and the answer will give you the correct answer but also describe a bit why the answers are correct. Then we have exercises and the exercises are there for you to practice what you've learned um, and those also have possible solutions. But since those are uh, well, there, it's up to you to write programs and yes, because that's the case, then there's no correct solution. There are just uh, possible solutions. So one possible solution is presented there, but you can solve the program in many different ways. Then also, like I said, we have the further explorations, which allows you to continue on and uh, do some, some more trickier things, more bigger things as well, but those do not have any answers or any solutions, so that's just for you to continue on and practice on your own and explore a bit further, hence their names. And like I said, one of the further ex uh, explorations in this case, in this for this lecture, is finishing the tic-tac-toe game, so adding the, uh, the proper win conditions for all different uh, ways of winning for vertical lines and all sort of things. It's supposed to like print out the board afterwards and allow you to play multiple times, keeping a score and whatnot. So that's one of them. And then there's another one as well. So that's about it. So they will be uploaded as soon as this lecture ends. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. This has been Coding and a Cup of Java, lecture number four about our race, Albin VSWE, and I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching, and I see you next lecture.